Well, hello, folks. You know, I did a pretty terrible live stream with my dumb phone, I think, about a week ago. And I was showing everybody that joined that live stream. And I'm sorry that I didn't, you know, when I was doing that, I didn't have my phone set up 100% correctly, but it was a flying by the seat of my pants kind of video. And I talked about these ugly stick, ugly tough guides. Now, as I mentioned then, and I'll men mention again, these guides are pretty tough and they're very ugly. These right here that you're seeing are not even close to as nasty as some of them that I've already cleaned. And in salt water, even if you wash them off, I mean, I had ones that looked like, as I said in that live stream, that they looked like they were growing bushes. They were so green and nasty. Here's one that's not bad. That's not bad compared to some that I had. And I've already cleaned about, I don't know, 10. I think I got 12 or 14 of these ugly stick stripers with the ugly tough guides. And I'm going to show you what we kind of talked about in that video. And let me let me pull it out here. Or a walk. The number one contributor to the Captain Day Sport Fishing YouTube channel. He mentioned, oh, I, in the comments, he mentioned how he soaks his ugly tough guides in vinegar. I picked some of this up at Home Depot. This is 30% vinegar concentrate. It says here, six times more powerful than standard vinegar. Well, to save you all the uh, trial and error, I soaked these guides in this 30% vinegar. And I even scrubbed them with this nylon brush. And I can tell you honestly that they didn't turn out as good as I wanted. I want to see no green and no rustiness. So what I'm doing now is I'm using some of this that I have left over that I used to clean my aluminum boat hull. And this is New Bright Condenser Coil Cleaner. It's the same thing. It's a brightener cleaner for aluminum. I use it on my, I've used it on my boat, my 26 foot aluminum boat. And it will brighten the aluminum and clean it. But either way, I got a little bit of this left and I'm gonna try it, and I've already tried it, on these guides. Because I just wanna get rid of the green that grows on these guides as corrosion, I guess, from being in salt water. So what I'm doing is I'm taking this brush and I got a little in this pan and it's going to foam. And I'll tell you, vinegar didn't foam. Foam tells me that it's eating stuff away. So... I'll kind of do a before and after here. 
Um, you're not being able to get a really good close up, but believe me, I've done six, eight, ten of these rods already. And I stick this on here and I let it foam up. And then I let it sit for a little bit and then I just spray it off with the hose. And it was taking away the green. So the whole moral of this video is you're going to need some, if you've got a lot of like, as I said in my live stream, I had literally bushes growing on here. I mean, the green stuff was so thick on these ugly, tough guides. Yes, they're tough. And yes, they are ugly. I don't know about the freshwater guys. But I can tell you honestly, in salt water, even if you clean these rods and and or clean these guides off every time you come back from fishing the salt water or whatever. I mean, look at this one. I'm hoping you can be able to see it. It's got like rusty stuff, all kind of green and everything in there. And you can see it on this eye at the very end. See all the green and rusty looking um, growth on there? It's literally like biomass. It's like it's like you're growing a reef. Okay. So I'm putting these on here. And it worked. It worked for me. The vinegar, even though it's 30%, what I did is I dipped it and I did the same thing I'm doing here with the vinegar and then I scrubbed it with these brushes with this brush and the green persisted um, so this is just sort of a follow-up I mean we all know that these aren't the most expensive guides in the world because of the fact that that's why Ugly Stick went to them so they could make their own I suppose and not be using anybody else's guides and these are pretty cheap stainless guides that's for damn sure me and Orowalk were talking after that live stream about if you had a rod that, or let's say two rods, that you really, really fish hard and you really depended on, wouldn't it be great just like knives to have them rewrapped with titanium guides wouldn't this guide right here be fantastic if it was titanium it would be light so Orowalk said you know what I'm really interested in this and he he went to mud hole tackle down in Orlando he went to mud holes website and looked around if you could literally get titanium guides because they're not going to corrode they're not going to rust and they're going to be very strong and he said the only thing that he could find on all of mud hole was like fly fishing titanium guides now i don't know because i don't build rods and i don't have rods built for me very often i have had before but they were all fuji just good fuji guides and wouldn't it be great if you had a favorite rod and i mean you beat that rod you're using it for years and the guides are crap and then you could you could have them rewrap now that might cost you it's gonna cost you but if the rod, let's say like this, this $40 striper rod, I mean, you can't destroy this rod. You just can't. 
I stopped having customers break rods when I went back to, key word, back to, ugly sticks. I started my charter business with ugly sticks. Then I thought I was going to, I turned into Mr. Fancy Pants. I met a guy who knew a guy who was looking for, you know, was a rep. And he was like, okay, yeah, I'm, I'm always looking to, you know, help a, a fishing guide out and everything. And I was on the G. Loomis guide program for, God dang, I don't know, eight, ten years. And let me tell you something. Every other week, every month, I was shipping broken rods back to G. Loomis. Because I believe, you know, nothing against Gary Loomis. He was an innovator in the rod building world in the United States. Okay? But I believe in his old catalog. He used to have a catalog for G. Loomis rods that was damn near a half inch thick. It was like the Bible of rods. I mean, he built a rod for smallmouth. He built a rod for bluegills. He built a rod for rainbow trout. He built a rod for steelhead. I mean, that's sort of how he did things. And he built that business and sold it to Shimano. And good for him. But in his catalog, in the preface, in the beginning, he would write like a little, you know, preface to the catalog and I remember reading in there one time he says I can build a rod that you will never break and then it was like comma but that never that doesn't mean you'd ever want to fish with it well here's my theory on that you can build a rod that will never break. And somebody in about 19, what was it, 72, I believe already beat you to it. And it was called the ugly stick. And I'm kind of getting out, I'm, you know, not in the ugly stick favor anymore because they don't even sell them on their website. You can't hardly get them. You can't hardly get them anymore. I'm trying to get. A, I'm trying to get a rod back over here. Sorry, I'm banging my light above here and all. So you can't even. I. I don't even know where you can get these. I mean, like Tackle Direct might have some ugly stick stripers or something like that but to literally go to the store to get them is very far and few between so I'm falling out of favor with them because I used to be on their guide program and I could go onto their website when I that's how I accrued so many ugly sticks I could go onto their website and I could order, you know, say six rods. And they would come FedEx and the shipping shipping was, you know, affordable. And they made things affordable for the people that were out there promoting their products. And then the China plague came. And I do not know what happened. I mean, their website was not even working anymore. They developed a new website. All their stuff was back ordered. Because you gotta remember, Ugly Stick, Shakespeare. Ugly Stick, Shakespeare, Berkeley. Uh, who else? Oh, there's a whole bunch of them. They're all under the roof of pure fishing. And all that stuff is coming out of probably 
you know, one or two factories all over in Shenzhen, China or something. So when it all boils down to it, I tried to order some rods. They don't even return your emails after being on their, you know, their guide program where you could get a discount because you are helping to promote their reels. I mean, and their, or their rods. And now they just forget about you. I don't know what the deal is, but, but I'm going to make the ones that I have here last. So let me wash these off. And I'm going to let them soak here for a minute. And this stuff will take, of course, this cleaner here, you know, has an acid in it. Heavy duty foaming brightens and cleans. I can't remember what it is that's in here. Maybe it says, this seems to be working for me. The vinegar. I can't, I don't, I can't, you know, spend a week cleaning these rod guides and soaking it in vinegar for a week. So that's not going to happen. Oops, sorry. And I wanted just to pass this on that if your ugly tough guides are looking more ugly than tough, get some aluminum brightener because it seems to be working and i'm sure there's a you know there's these uh you know youtube chemists out there oh well you got to use this you got to do that whatever guess what i'm using i'm using what i have i purchased this vinegar already it didn't really work that great for me so i have this already so that's what i'm using i'm using what i have and it seems to be that this brightener, aluminum cleaner and brightener, is doing enough on these so-called stainless guides. Now, as I said in the live video that I did, I used to, or I did it, I said it in the comments, I used to use Tarnex, the stuff that you dip silver in, and it even says it doesn't work on stainless steel, but it's it works enough. I don't have any Tarnex, so that's the reason I'm using this. And I'm going to show you what these guides look like afterwards of letting them soak with this on there. Foam it on there. If it takes the first layer of skin off your hands, I'm sure it can clean these so-called so-called stainless guides all right i'll be right back i gotta wash these off and i'll we'll take a look at what they look like afterwards all right i'm back now i didn't let these soak very long because i've been at this it seems like for hours with 12 or 14 rods that I'm trying to clean up a little bit, but not all the green is gone, but you can see they're a little better than they were, especially when you look at like the tip. I still see some green on there, but they're cleaned up at least a little bit. Now, I do not know, and maybe the YouTube chemists out there know, what would be the perfect chemical. I'm just using what I have. Okay? I'm just using what I have. Let me get, a, let me get another rod, too. There's still a little bit right in here. It scratches right off with your finger. I'm trying to give you the best shot. Now, a lot of these guides, believe it or not, the epoxy is all over from that mass produced. But just to look at the 
the tips. I mean, it's not, obviously, this acid is not, it's not hurting this structurally. Like I said, I used to use Tarnex on some of the old chrome-plated guides. But, I mean, in all reality, these ugly, tough guides, they're just tough. They're nothing pretty. I don't know if Ugly Stick even knows how ugly these ugly, tough guides really are. But, I mean, they're hideous. If you're looking for you know, a prettier rod. You got to look elsewhere. This one, look at that. Like rusty or something. But I mean, that thing ain't going nowhere. And it's, it's cleaned up from what it was, believe it or not. Same thing with this one. It's like, it looks rusty. I'm going to get a pick here. And I'm going to give a little scrape on this. All right. We're going to use this one as an example. It's rusty looking up in here. And if I scrape this stuff off, it's actually clean underneath. I'm hoping you can see it. GoPro Hero 5 isn't made for like, you know, micro videoing close-ups. But look at, there's stuff coming off of here. And if it's, I don't know if it's rust or what it is. Let me look at another one. Here's one. All up in here, here, you can see it. It looks it looks rusty. What is that? I mean, it's flaking like rust. Very hard to tell. You know, <laughs> Old Orowak was talking about putting a magnet to them. And just like a knife, you know, you can kind of figure out, I guess, how much stainless is in here or whatever. But look at that. I can kind of scrape it. And whatever is on there comes off. Not not a pretty picture, Ugly Stick Shakespeare. Shakespeare Ugly Stick. Not a pretty picture. You know, you try to cheap stuff up, I guess, and you, you, you're making it better, you think, by using your proprietary guides here. And they get the job done. I'm not bitching about that. But... In all reality here, you know, I kind of, you know, with my customers, I kind of want them to, you know, the impression to be like, hey, okay, this guy's got the decent tackle. Okay, I've got thousands and thousands of dollars wrapped up in rods and reels. I do not know what's going on here. I don't know what that is. Rust. <laughs> you know, like I said, maybe a YouTube chemist, because there's probably multiples, multitudes of YouTube chemists out there, guys that, you know, whatever you say and whatever you do, you're doing it wrong according to them. That's just the way YouTube is anymore. But all I know is diesel is over five dollars a gallon and i'm not running around looking for the perfect chemical i'm using what i have here in my shop so there you go it is a real quandary isn't it folks 
you got tough guides yes they're tough i mean i can you can pick this rod up and twirl it around via that guide but don't don't be looking for something that's pretty especially after these things have been used in salt water for years all right well that was my experiment today the 30 percent vinegar i soaked i scrubbed i only got so much time you know i can't <laughs> i've already got i don't know three four hours wrapped in here so i ended up using this condenser cleaner i don't even know if that's the right stuff to use to try to clean up stainless supposed stainless steel that's the whole idea suppose it's stainless steel either way i got these cleaned up and they'll be pressed in the service i mean look at there's something like literally flaking off of this one and a lot of that is the epoxy for the wrap drips down here all over the guides they seem to let, just let it drip down and get all over these guides and they might wipe out the center because a lot of them sure have a lot of stuff on them. Look at this one here. Now, it's still green, but I can scrape that green off. And it's all up inside the actual eye. Oh my God, what the hell is all this? I mean, it's a $40 rod, or it used to be when I bought them. And I love the action because companies anymore, even the companies that do saltwater tackle, you know, many times in, let's say, inshore saltwater fishing, I'm actually using lighter rods than a lot of freshwater guys. I mean, you look at those bass rods, and those things are as stiff as a board. And I don't want that. I want a rod with monster, monster parabolic flex. I mean, look at that. That's what I have to have for customers who are not big time fishermen. And I can tell you, I've got several of the $39.99 Daiwa, new Daiwa beef sticks, the blue ones. And what a rod they are. Fantastic for the price. But they don't have triggers the lightest the lightest ones that they make don't have a trigger now that's okay for me i could care less i don't need a trigger just to to fish or to cast me personally we've already been over that on my channel and you know but Again, because of the price point, yeah, I can flake stuff right off in here. Because of that price point, it is extremely difficult for someone like me to find six, seven, eight um, Daiwa, the new Daiwa beef sticks. Now, they don't have guides like this. They've got plain old ceramic guides and the beef sticks are my personal rods i use them myself and i've had not one single issue with them so the rod quandary and the ugly stick that just continues to stay ugly so there you go that's my attempt and i'll see you on the next one.